I never knew after a random meeting with this huge YouTuber, I would be scouring a paint shop in London looking for a fast and furious movie used Lamborghini Murcielago, driven by none other than Roman Pierce in Fast and the Furious. And hold the starting button. Um, but also try and retain some of these cool little features on this car from the movie. I'm gonna skip my brakes, I'm gonna make mistakes. I'm gonna skip my brakes, I'm gonna make mistakes. I'm gonna skip my brakes, I'm gonna make mistakes. Look at beautiful stars, I wanna drive a faster car. This episode or make or break is all about how meeting the legendary Freddy Tavares at SEMA 2019 led to a Jurassic Park style vehicle hunt. I never knew after a random meeting with this huge YouTuber, I would be scouring a paint shop in London looking for a fast and furious movie used Lamborghini Murcielago, driven by none other than Roman Pierce in Fast and the Furious. So back in January 2020, Tavarish asked if I could go and check this car out. The car had actually been used in the Fast and the Furious live show too and had been heavily modified. The car was in truly poor shape and was now powered by a Jaguar V6 and it really didn't look like it had a future. I had already sold the engine, transmission and basically the pure contents of the running gear of this car to Ed Bolian, which ended up with Tavares. So it was fitting that if he could get this car back, it would be more than perfect. Then on a sunny summer's day, I had a call from Freddy Tavares telling me he had done a deal and the previous owner had had the car painted and it was in a lot better shape. So on that note, I was off. Loaded up the trailer on the Jurassic Park Explorer and I was off on a hunt for another Fast and the Furious beast. Hey then guys, it's Sam from Art Garage and we're in the middle of nowhere with the Jurassic Park beast and my co-driver, Steve Hawkins. And uh, we bought the trailer. And normally that means we're gonna buy something. But in this case, we're just collecting it for a good friend of mine in the Yankee Doodle Land. And uh, yeah, we thought we'd bring the uh, Jurassic Park wagon. It's tax MOT and insured and it's got fuel in it. And we're going to see something pretty special. So uh, we'll keep you updated throughout the journey. Okay, so we're in the middle of nowhere. Jurassic Park car over there, very handy. Lambert Orangey, right there. Well, there she bees. It's a lot better than the last time we saw it. Right, this is the... Uh... Oh, that opens a damn sort of nicer than my dad blow. Box of willies. Right, we're in. Very yeah. Okay, so we're inside the Lamborghini. And I mean, there's not a lot of it left. We've got some door cast missing, dashboard, windscreen broke, but it's cool. Roof lining's got some air conditioning. We're just gonna have a play around and see if we can get started. Right. Right, remote control unlock. Yeah. Yeah, you will see the blue light around the yep. starting button. Yep. Press the brake. Yeah. Make sure the car is in neutral. Yep. And hold the starting button. Apparently 
that's what a windscreen looks like for a Lamborghini. And then, what you got there, Steve? Interior bits. So what's it called, a box of? Dicks. Thank you. This car came with a multitude of spares, including a brand new windscreen, carbon fiber door cards, and even carbon fiber dash panels. So after viewing and measuring the car, we could see that the car was far too wide to fit on my trailer. So we loaded all the parts up, which in my opinion were worth nearly the same amount as the car. I didn't feel that parting with Tavares' money until I had the car was appropriate. So I loaded all the parts up and I was on my way. The next morning, the previous owner was having second thoughts. I had all his car parts and he had the car. He was feeling that he didn't want to sell the car anymore, but I did have all the parts. I reminded him that if he wanted to come and collect them, he could, but he would still owe me the money from the previous day's labor. I didn't go there for free, and although I was helping a friend out, my time is still precious. But after a chat, I managed to reassure the owner that Tavares was the man for this car. I then had the car collected safely on my buddy's recovery truck, and we had it. Therefore, I transferred the money, and the car was ours. As soon as the car was on the truck, I therefore transferred the money to the previous owner. He was happy, Tavares was happy, everyone was happy. No money was lost and the car was in safe hands. The next morning when the car arrived, I called upon a mutual friend of me and Tavares, Scott from the Ratarossa channel. He agreed to help me get the car ready for shipping. So what happens when you're on a uh, Lambo hunt with uh, Mr. Ratarossa himself? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I guess you can call it a Lambo, can't you, this one? Uh, it's a, yeah, it's a real one. It's got, it's it used to have a one. badge and everything. Needs a little bit of work, a tiny little bit. Uh, we'll get to that. Something that we can't handle. Well, Scott, a couple of questions for you. Obviously, we all understand you're the Ferrari man, okay? Let's take you out of that pot and let's <laughs> dip you in a bit of Lamborghini. A bit of Lamborghini, oh, this is going to be a tricky one. So, the question is, what would I do with this car? If it was mine, yeah? Yep. Having gone round it, having looked at it, and having had a deep look into the car, and knowing everything else that comes with it, we've got a big, well, two pallets really worth of parts there, and knowing the fact that you have already supplied the uh, running gear and the original engine for this car, correct? Yep. I think it would be crazy not to try and rebuild it. Do it properly. Um, Definitely a nice paint job. This looks great on camera, but it's not a great paint job. Um, but also try and retain some of these cool little features on this car from the movie that we will reveal at some point. But um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's basically a complete car, so it would be crazy not to try and put it back together as a complete car and uh, have it as a running, driving, enjoyable Merchelago, manual Merchelago, which is, uh, are worth an absolute fortune nowadays. Plus the history of the car, this has got to be uh, a very, very good buy. So after some hard work, me and Scott got the car running. We wanted to make sure that the car could move under its own steam as the shipping agent said that that was a necessity. Nice. 
there we have it, teamwork. So after a road test, I could feel the brakes were in poor shape, but at least I knew the car moved under its own power. So now thanks to Scott and Tavarish, I have a taste for the supercar world, but on a hard up garage budget. After hanging around the supercar mechanics and Jaguar powered Lambos, it got me thinking. There's a lap. I know where there is a very similar car. It is also a Lamborghini Murcielago, but this car is a Lamborghini replica. It was hidden from the world for about three years just down the road from my garage. Maybe I could save it and make myself a Lamborghini replica faster than the Furious replica. I'm sure there's some logic to the madness or method to the madness. I love the Bluetooth door, door card. Guys, on next week's episode, let's see if I get my hands on the Lamborghini. And what is it powered by? All my replicas before have been V8 powered. What will it have? Comment below with your guesses. Please, if you like what we're doing, click on that like button. And if you really like what we're doing, comment on the video below. Please share this video on social media with all your friends. Look at beautiful stars, I wanna drive a faster car. Okay guys, when you're purchasing a vehicle, one of the most important things is an inspection or a ministry test, which is an MOT. A ministry official test, MOT, is a basic sense of uh, tick boxes that an MOT tester will check to make sure the car is safe. But when these are done, you can go online to a website called the DVLA or the uh, VimWiki or the actual um, same equivalent site in America and you'll find if the vehicle has been inspected every year. When that vehicle is inspected, the mileage will be logged, okay? So when the vehicle is new, it is not due for an MOT for three years, so you'd hope to have a service stamp every year showing the mileage. From then onwards, you can check the mileage on the website itself. That is really, really important. If you're gonna buy a car with 50,000 miles and it's 10 years old, you wanna look through that log and just make sure that the vehicle itself has been MOT'd every year and the mileage stays consistent. That way you know the car is what it is. It isn't a ringer. It hasn't had the clocks changed out to make it look like it's done less miles. There you go, guys, another tip of the day. See you next week. Time for make or break to take a break. See you on Wednesday for regular episodes but we might be releasing more snippets on other days in the near future, so follow us on social media for updates about that. We're on all major platforms. Goodbye for now.